Hello YouTube. Uh, still in Florida. I got my little poodle next to me. There's no cats here. I'm having uh, cat withdrawals. I think I hear cats meowing at night. I'm like, where's that fucking cat? I want to pet that thing. Uh, I finished a book. I finished this one right here. This is the last one in the Andrew W. Field series. I got lots of notes in here. Uh, I was going to go to my Hofschrauer Waterloo campaign, and I started looking inside this, and I'm like, okay, where's the fucking Maps of Ligny? There are no Maps of Ligny because this is a two-book series, and, and uh, I can't just start with this one. i gotta, I got to get the other one first, so it's going to be like eight days. I've already started on a book, Justinian's Flea, and... Uh, you know, some people can take a subject like this and and turn it boring, you know. And, and I, I may not finish this one, but let's get into this because uh, I got some notes in here. Uh, this was a 320-page book, and it took me a few days to, to finish this. This picks up right at... Right at the retreat from, from Waterloo, you know, the, the guard is forming squares and, and Napoleon is hidden inside one of these squares and, and, you know, this is also a French perspective, so so there's some things that are never written about. The French don't want to write about the, the Prussians and, and the Prussians sabering them at that bridge in Genape and, and they don't want to write about... Uh, uh, the Prussians finding uh, Napoleon's carriage. I don't know. This this is this is like a day later. This first note, and some of the wounded French are are, are hiding in buildings, and, and uh, this guy's there, and he thinks he's safe. But the Prussians find him, and uh, some of the Prussians treat him okay, and they give him a little bit of food. But uh, he says. But a Prussian drummer undertook to pull off my boots and dragged me twice around the room to get them off. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, I don't think he gets his boots. The, the rest of the, the the other Prussians throw this drummer out the door. Uh, okay. In the last book, Napoleon has this servant, and his name is Mameluk Ali. And the Mamelukes were this, you know, this group of people, kind of like usurpers that that uh, were in were in Egypt. And I know about this. You know, I've got two books about Napoleon in Egypt, and and it's spelled Mameluk, M-A-M-E, Luke. So in the bat in the last book, he inexplicably he's he's spelling it Marmaluke. And I was reading it, and I even said something to my poor wife, who doesn't care about this shit. I said, he's fucking spelling it Marmaluke. I know that's not right. So I even Googled it. Mameluke is right. There's several points in this book where he talks about Mameluke Ali. He spells it Mameluke. I look back in that other book, three places he spells it Marmaluke. Just kind of irritated me a little bit. Uh, somebody that... You know, knows a hell of a lot more about this shit than I do. Uh, misspelling something like that. Uh, the French have a hard time getting their troops back in hand after they suffer that kind of catastrophic defeat. They're 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 really they're a mob streaming. They don't even know where. Uh, and there's this guy D. Erlon that he's kind of an idiot uh, on the day of Ligny. D. D Erlon kind of marches back and forth, and he gets orders from Napoleon, and he gets orders from Ney. He doesn't know what orders to, to obey, and he ends up trying to obey both of them, and he can't do it. And, and basically, on the day of Ligny and Quatre Bras, D. Erlon, with his 25,000 men, just marches back and forth and ends up contributing to nothing. And so I was thinking, man, this fucking D. Erlon is a fucking idiot. But no, he's he turns out after Waterloo to be one of the few officers to uh, have their shit together. 
his troops seem to respect him, and he's able to turn this uh, disorganized rout with this mob of fleeing idiots that are just throwing their, their muskets down. He's able to turn that around and, and organize his men a little bit. It can't be easy. Uh, later on, you have Grouchy, who really also didn't contribute to anything. Uh, Grouchy's men fought at Ligny, but they were on the French right flank, where there wasn't that much fighting, so Grouchy's over there with 30,000 men. He, Napoleon blames Waterloo basically on Grouchy. Napoleon also blames it on Ney. But uh, Grouchy kind of gets screwed. Uh and he's got, I talked about this on that last video, there's there's more friction between Grouchy and Van Damme. Uh, you know, it, it, Grouchy did kind of screw up the pursuit of the Prussians after Ligny. Okay, and then I skip a long ways here. We're all, we're all the way to the 26th of June. Uh, Blucher wants to hang Napoleon. Blucher wants to kill Napoleon. The, the, the Prussians hate the French. Blucher wants Napoleon dead. He doesn't care how. So Blucher is, is marching, marching, marching to Paris. Uh, Wellington, not so much. Wellington is kind of marching in the dust of the Prussians, and Wellington doesn't even have to fight. Wellington just wants to make sure that Louis XVIII gets installed. Wellington's all about regime change. Uh, Grouchy gets gets promoted and, and Grouchy gets you know promoted in charge of the whole army. He they're leaving Grouchy in the lurch. Uh, uh, I end up feeling sorry for Grouchy after reading this. Uh, so later on Louis the eighteenth gets installed in, in uh, Paris uh, and all the French officers have to sign this 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 document of you know, their loyalty to to Lewis and uh, one of these guys, uh, he calls it the last sigh of the army. It's very sad, actually, reading about the, the poor French army here. You know, when they're marching on Paris, I, I've got a note here that says, certainly there has never been a situation quite like this. There hasn't. Uh, the Prussians get there first. The English are, are marching in, you know, Blucher's dust. There's also some Russians on their way, and there's also Austrians on their way. But at this time, Napoleon's only like 25 miles away. The French army has concentrated on, on Paris. The French army actually outnumbers the Prussians. Even if you put the Prussians and the English together, the French army still outnumbers them. So, you know, things could turn around. And you got Louis the Eighteenth, you know, involved in this. You got this uh, chief of police. His name is Fouch. Uh, Fouch is a quite a conniving son of a bitch. They don't really say anything about Talleyrand, but I know Talleyrand is behind the scenes pulling the strings. Uh, it's just a very odd situation. The French, if they wanted to, if if, if uh, their army had revolted, uh, uh, it, it could have turned out quite different. Uh, eventually, uh, Fouch signs what they call the Convention of St. Cloud. And uh, it, it's, it's a treaty. Uh, it's a ceasefire, and, and it gets violated a couple times. Not too much. The Austrians finally appear. Uh, I waited for this through the whole fucking book. This is a 320-page book, and here I'm at page 314, and uh, Ney, who is probably one of the most famous uh, uh, marshals of Napoleon, at this time, even Spain is marching over there. Ney gets actually executed. There's only a few of them that get executed. 
and there's a, an eyewitness to this, and, and apparently Ney's last words, he says, Frenchman, I protest against my condemnation, my honor, and he moves his hand over to his heart, and as he moves his hand over at these last words, he as he placed his hand on his heart, the reports of the muskets were heard. He fell dead. A roll of the drums and the cries of Long Live the King, which arose from the troops formed in square, terminated this dismal ceremony. The hero of the Berezina was no more. Oh, and I've got historical perspective written on this note. You know, if you didn't know anything about the Napoleonic Wars, and all you read about was the army concentrating on Paris and all these other armies squeezing it in there, and, you know, you read about the the brutal mistreatment, uh, you know, by the Prussians, you might end up feeling sorry for the French if you didn't have that historical perspective, if you didn't know that for the last... 20 years they had been trying to subjugate parts of Africa and, and most of Europe. You might end up posting stupid-ass things on YouTube like Save the French. Uh, you have to have that historical perspective. You have to know what has happened before. While it may not have been right for the Prussians to chase them down and stick sabers through their bodies or, or you know chop their heads in half with a saber. There is this thing called historical perspective that allows you to understand why the Prussians were doing that. Too many people on YouTube pick up stories at the very end and they end up posting dumbass shit like, like Save the Boar when they don't know anything about the history of, of South Africa and what happened to the indigenous tribes there. And it makes them look very stupid. And it aggravates the fuck out of me because these people sit around and watch racist fucking videos and they don't even know anything. They're, they're just... Ah, they're, there's a million. There's no shortage of them kind of fucking people on YouTube. So, thanks for watching. That's it.